All right, this is Mr. Bloom with Monday's homework. We have here, we're looking for a pattern. Learning geometry is all about understanding patterns. What do they do here? They switched my 80 and my measure of angle A. Well, this, from your notes, is symmetric property. Next one. If RS equals TU and TU equals YP, then RS equals YP. Well, TU is my middleman. This is transitive property. Right here, we're looking, we're solving for X. So if 7X equals 28 and X equals 4, then we had to divide by 7. This is division property. This one is VR plus TY, those are distances, equal EN plus TY. And we're left with VR, distances VR and EN. Well, what do we have to do? We had to subtract TY from both of those. So this is subtraction property. If the measure of angle one equals 30, and the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 2, well, then the measure of angle 2 must be equal to 30. So what did we do? We just did substitution property there. Okay, number 6. Reflexive property. Remember, reflexive comes from, think of reflection in your mirror. It looks exactly the same. So this is going to be, look exactly the same. Transitive property. It's our justification. So if A equals, if measure of angle A, or angle A is congruent with a angle X, and angle X is congruent with angle T, then angle X is our middleman. So our statement is going to be angle A is congruent to angle T. Next, symmetric property of congruence. Remember, we're symmetric. We just swap them out. We just are switching orders here. Symmetric prop property, SYMM. So this is going to be segment NP is congruent to segment BC. Let's do a proof. Let's do our first proof. Number nine. Given this, prove that x equals 1. So here's our statement. This is what we started with. This reason is given. So now what did happen here? Well, they subtracted 2x. They subtracted 2x. So this is subtraction property. Subtraction property of equality or subtraction POE. This is addition property. They added 5 to both sides. And now what was the last step here? Well, they had to divide by 6. So we get x equals 1. And that's by division. Property of equality. Okay? That's number 9. Let's go to number 10. 10. There. This is what we'll start with. There's our statement. It's given. And then what do we do here? We have a 4 here that we have to multiply the two things in the parentheses with. Well, this is distribute, distributive property. Whoops, I can't spell. D-I-S-T-R-I. -I, distributive property. Now, what happened here? We're using subtraction property. So, we're subtracting something here. Well, what we need to subtract is our 4x. So, we get x minus 3 equals 8. Next step, we're going to have to add the 3 to both sides to get x equals 11 to get our solution. So that is addition property. 
of equality. Okay? All right, that's the first 10. Let's look at the back. This is multiple choice. So the first one is how many planes can be drawn through a three non-collinear points? Well, there, it takes three points to create a plane. All right? So remember we were drawing triangles? That's one plane. So how many, how many planes can I draw through that? Well, it doesn't matter how many colors I use. It's the same three points. It's still the same plane. So there's really only one plane you can draw through there. And that's the answer for 11. Number 12, it's asking which three points in the figure are collinear. Well, there's two points collinear. There's two points collinear. There's two points that are collinear. Let's look at this. A, B, D. A, B, D are not collinear. They're on the same plane, but they're not collinear. A, B, C are not collinear. They're on the same plane, P. E, C, A. E, C, A. Again, they're on the same plane, P, but they are not collinear. So F, E, G is the only only one that could, put, could work. F, E, G. That one works. They're collinear. There's my G, there's my E, there's my F. They're on, along this line. Next one. Name the intersection of plane P and the plane that contains point B, C, D. So the plane that contains B, C, D is right here. B, C, D. So that's this plane right here. And this plane is intersection, intersecting with plane P, which is this plane. Well, remember when two lines, two planes intersect, the result is a, a line. And that line is line BC. Given A is between Y and Z, so we have Y and we have Z. And A is between there somehow. Uh, YA is 5.5. AZ is 2X and the whole thing, yz, is 41.5. So this is part plus part equals whole. So let's put this, plug this in. 5.5 plus 2x equals 41.5. So let's subtract 5.5. We'll get 2x equals 36. Divide by 2, we get x equals 18. So that's what x equals. They want us to find az. Well, az is equal to 2x. So 2 times 18 is 36. That's our answer. That's our answer. Let's look at the last one. Find the length pq. We're using the diagram to the right. So pq, we want to find this. This is our question mark. Well, this is part plus part equals whole. So the question mark plus 12.6 equals 38.3, right? So we want to solve for the question mark. And to do that, we have to subtract the 12.6. We subtract 12.6. We're going to borrow from the 8. So that's 13. That's 7. That's 5. So 25.7 is our answer. All right, this is Mr. Bloom, Paytel High School. This is the homework from Monday.